Hi, my name is Katherine Pullens. I'm a professor at the Culinary Institute of America. I'm going to show you today how to make bean bourguignon. This is a spin on a classic dish called beef bourguignon. This dish is made on a base of kidney beans. So the first thing we need to talk about is what kind of beans you're going to use. These are red kidney beans. You could do light or dark red, it doesn't really matter. And you'll buy them either in the dry form, in a one pound bag or from the bulk bins in your favorite supermarket, or you can buy them in the canned, ready cooked version, which is what you'll see here in this bowl. If you buy the dry beans, you're gonna to need to soak them overnight. Today I'm gonna to be making this dish with already cooked canned beans. And the first step is to preheat your pan. So while my pan is coming up to temperature, I'm going to add olive oil. Now one of the things that is very classic in a bourguignon is the use of bacon or smoked pork product. And because this is a vegetarian version, you might want to select using this product, which is called smoked tempeh. Smoked tempeh is made from fermented soybeans that are pressed into a block and then smoked. It can be fried like this to make bacon bits or tempeh bits. And for this particular dish, I'm gonna start by adding, along with the olive oil, some of the smoked tempeh. And it's been cut in pieces that are about one inch. And I'm just gonna add enough that I think would be an appropriate flavoring, probably about two ounces. Once the oil starts heating and the tempeh starts to sizzle a little bit, you can add the minced garlic and also the minced shallots. Now I suppose if you didn't have shallots, you could certainly use onions. The tempeh and the shallots and the garlic need to sweat or saute lightly until they become aromatic. And so right now, I can smell that they're cooking. The next thing to add is going to be carrots. And at this point, these vegetables need to sweat. So I'm gonna turn the heat very low and I'm gonna put a lid on. The carrots have all been sweat down now. At this point, I'm gonna add cremini mushrooms. The next thing I'm gonna add is crushed tomatoes. You can buy these canned, already crushed, or you can buy whole plum tomatoes canned and puree them yourself. And at this point, I'm also gonna add half of the vegetable stock, and I'm gonna add half of the red wine. So the wine you're gonna to choose to add to this dish would be a very good burgundy wine. The name Bourguignon actually comes from the region of France where Burgundy wine comes from. These vegetables need to cook and I'm going to allow these vegetables to simmer very gently for about 20 minutes to a half an hour. And at this point I'm going to add some rosemary, three sprigs of thyme, and I'm going to add one good size bay leaf. I'm going to just stir the herbs in. I'm also going to add just a small pinch of salt at this point so that the salt can start cooking in and season up those mushrooms and carrots. Mushrooms and the carrots have been simmering for about 25 minutes now. I'm going to add the already cooked canned kidney beans. And I'm going to add the remainder of the vegetable stock and the remainder of the red wine. And I'm going to let this dish now simmer about another 15 or 20 minutes. Now you can see that this stew has quite a bit of liquid and as this simmers it's going to lose a little bit of that liquid. We want this dish to be very stew-like. So there are a few options that you have. In the recipe, it asks for you to make a mixture of flour and butter. This combination is called bourmani. And bourmani is a classic French thickening agent. It's whole butter, softened, and flour. And it's just kneaded together or mixed together to form a little bit of a paste. And then this paste can be added in at the very last moment as a thickening agent. The other thing you can do is eliminate the use of starch altogether and just let this reduce until it becomes a thickness that you are happy with. It's time now to take our herbs out. You can see that the stew liquid is quite thin. I'm just going to take a spoonful of the bourmani and I'm just going to slide it into the stew. And with the stew simmering, I'm just going to stir this in and you'll see the liquid start to thicken as it simmers and as the bourmani dissolves in. You could serve the bean stew just as it is, but a very nice way to finish it and to kind of pump up the heartiness of this meal would be to serve it with some already cooked brown rice or pasta. I'm going to just spoon some brown rice into a bowl, about a half cup of cooked brown rice, and then ladle a portion over the brown rice. Now this big pot of stew is for four. This recipe can be found in my book, 
Vegetarian Cooking at Home with the Culinary Institute of America. For more information about the Culinary Institute of America's educational programs and food enthusiast classes, please visit ciachef.edu. And for more recipes and videos, please visit our recipe blog at ciaculinaryintelligence.com. Thank you.